He's convinced he can satisfy the army by using jet power to increase the flight time of his rocket belt. So the second generation was to create a jet belt with an air-breathing jet engine rather than a 21-second rocket. The key advantage of an air-breathing jet engine is it uses less fuel than a rocket. But what Wendell Moore needs is a miniaturized version. Working with Dr. Sam Williams, one of America's top jet experts, they develop a jet engine small enough to fit on a man's back. And that was the heart and soul of the Bell jet belt. Two tanks of kerosene fuel the miniature jet engine. As the fan sucks in air, some goes to the combustion chamber. The rest is used to cool the hot turbine gases to protect the pilot. The powerful jet exhaust flows out of the two nozzles to lift the flying soldier into the air. Wendell Moore reckons this engine is so efficient it can keep a soldier in the air for up to 25 minutes. He persuades the Defense Department to fund a prototype. For the next four years, the jet belt is put through intensive tests, using a safety harness just in case. The military are impressed. Even during these initial trials, the miniature jet engine seems as good as Wendell Moore predicted. With the jet belt still in development, he's already working on ways to adapt it for the flying soldier. Wendell came up with what we called the pogo stick, which was a stand-on, no straps, no stand, no nothing. We flew the first prototype as a rocket machine because the jet engine hadn't been developed yet. The Pogo had a key advantage for the battlefield. Without a pack on his back, a soldier could just land and move quickly into position. 